In this video, we will talk about the condition number of a matrix and its application in uh, MIMO systems. So let's start by defining or representing a MIMO system, 2 cross 2 MIMO system. So we have two transmit antennas and two receive antennas. Let's say this is transmit antenna 1, this is transmit antenna 2, this is receive antenna 1, this is receive antenna 2 and uh, uh, x1 is the transmitted signal from transmit antenna 1 x2 is transmitted signal from transmit antenna 2 and y1 and y2 are received signal now there can be a direct path between t1 and r1 and there can be a direct path between t2 and r2 similarly uh, there can be a path between T1 and R2 and T2 and R1. So let's say uh, this path we denote it as a uh, we'll say this is H11, this is H22 and this is uh, H21 and this is H12. So the channel between both the antennas can be represented in terms of the linear system of equations something like this. So we have a uh, channel elements H11, H12 and uh, transmitted signal X1 and X2 and receive signal Y1 and Y2. This can be represented as a matrix form here and we can write it down in a concise form Y equal to HX plus W. So the task of the receiver is to first estimate the channel and then based on the received signal estimate the transmitted signal. W here is a noise. So let's see how this is done by using a, an example. Okay. So Uh, I have defined a matrix H something like this 1 1 1 minus 1 this is the transmitted uh, signal or transmitted vector 1 3 and now at the receiver we will calculate we will have uh, receive signal Y as H into X at the transmitter we will calculate or estimate the transmitted signal by doing H inverse Y operation and this H inverse Y operation can be done by using this black slash operation uh, operator in MATLAB and if this is done correctly then this X hat 0 should be equal to X and then I have added some noise to the Y and then again I am doing H inverse Y operation and I will get x at 1. That should also be close to the x if everything is written correct here. So let's run this part of the code. Okay, now we can see that x hat 0 is actually 1 3 which is correct and when we add some noise to y we still get the values which are closer to 1 and 3. Okay, now let's uh, different uh, uh, matrix with uh, some delta value added to this matrix. So, and then I'm doing the same operations here. So let's run this part of the code and see what happens. Okay, so first we did not get x had 0 as 1 3 it is 0 
and 3.00 something so it's not exactly exact representation of this and have added the noise this becomes completely different thing so what is the difference between this matrix and this matrix that is the interesting point to know the other thing to know is that the in the practical systems we will not calculate the direct inverse like this we will cal calculate this using some uh, transformations like Cholesky decomposition or QR decomposition or SVD so the, let's see using Cholesky in this example so I have a matrix H receive vector Y I am calculating Cholesky on H transpose H I am getting X and Y hat so this Y hat should be equal to this if everything is okay let's run this part of the code okay so y hat is uh, not exactly 1 3 but it is very close so this Cholesky is adding some precision errors so this is coming as 1 and 2.99 which is okay now if we take this matrix and do again the uh, inverse using Cholesky decomposition and see what is the value of y hat here okay so this is completely off it is nowhere close to 1 3 so we need to understand uh, the property one important property of this matrix matrix which will tell us why this kind of thing is happening and that is called the condition number of a matrix matrix and that is defined as uh, if we calculate the norm of the matrix and multiply by this by with the uh, norm of the inverse of the matrix so if I have a first matrix H then the condition uh, number will be norm of H and multiplied by norm of inverse of H. So the condition number for this matrix is 1. Let's see what is the condition number for this matrix so say then condition number for this matrix is very large value so this is the difference between these two matrices which is uh, causing uh, very large numerical errors this is the one way of looking at the condition number there is another way so first way is uh, norm of h and multiplied by the norm of the inverse of h that gives the condition number the other way is using svd so if i have a matrix a i will calculate the svd of that matrix which will give me the three matri component matrices u1 s1 and v1 then the um, maximum value i mean this is a diagonal matrix s1 so the maximum value in the diagonal which are called singular values of that matrix so the maximum of the singular values divided by the minimum of the singular value gives me the condition number so let's look at it from for example if i can do it here as well say i will take the u s v s v d of h if i calculate here 
and then if I calculate the condition number using this property I will make this something like e2 okay now let's see what is c2 this should be s so this s and what is c2 so this is very close to this number so there are two ways of calculating the um, condition number one was using the norms other was uh, using the uh, svd and what does this condition number mean in the geometry form so to do that uh, to represent that let's see this with one example what i'm doing here i have three matrices a1 a2 a3 i'm calculating the svd of uh, all three matrices and then calculating the uh, condition number for all these three matrices and then i'm plotting the the matrix with the unit circle so this is the unit circle um, matrix and I'm, I'm multiplying the matrix with the unit circle and then plotting it for all the three matrices and then let's see what is the result let's run this part of the code okay so here we see this is our original uh, unit circle to this x and then uh, this is uh, the result of the multiplication with the first matrix this is the result of the multiplication with the second matrix and this is the result of the uh, multiplication with the third matrix and if we see what is the c1 c2 c3 values condition numbers for these matrices c2 and c3 so if we see the c1 is a uh, condition number is very small then the condition number two is little bit higher than that and then condition number three is very large it is infinity so we can see that uh, what is the distortion in introduced by the matrix is related to the condition number if the condition number is small the distortion to the original unit circle is uh, not very large if condition number becomes little bit higher then the distortion to the original uh, unit circle is high and then uh, if condition number is very large then the distortion is uh, uh, very large so this is the geometrically we can see the effect of the condition number of a matrix to the vector so this is very important so let's summarize these things first of all the condition number of uh, any non singular matrix which means the matrix is invertible in that case the condition number of that matrix a is always greater than or equal to 1 and a matrix is called well condition if this condition number is small or close to 1 if the matrix is ill condition or badly condition then the condition number will be very large also other point to note that if the condition number of matrix is greater than 1 over square root of the eps the which is the machine precision then there will be uh, numeric numerical problems so for example here in our first example yeah for this matrix let's see so let's 
calculate the condition matrix another way of calculating condition matrix in the matlab is just using this command so the condition matrix of a condition number of matrix is h and what is the uh, 1 over square root of uh, eps which is this so the condition number is obviously larger than the 1 over square root of the eps that is the reason why uh, here we will not we were not able to do uh, we were not able to recover the x and there were large errors numerical errors in this case uh, one more thing about the eps eps is the uh, is the precision by the machine so uh, if i have say in this case i have eps value of this which means this is the smallest number that can be represented uh, by this machine so if i have say x equal to 1 and then y equal to x plus eps then it is oh, y minus x is equal to eps but if i have x equal to 1 and say if i do eps by 2 and then if i do y minus x i have 0 which means there's no number which can be represent with where there's no number which is smaller than the eps that can be represented by this machine and in regard to the condition number if the condition number of the matrix is larger than the 1 over square root of the eps then we will have the problems in the numerical results this is the important thing and uh, yeah, so in the practical systems, there's never a good reason to invert a matrix. We we avoid the inversion of a matrix whenever possible, especially by using the explicit explicit computation uh, for inverting a matrix. So uh, we use uh, other methods which are decomposition based, like the Cholesky decomposition, QR decomposition, LUD or LDL decomposition. So these are the different ways of uh, uh, calculating the inverse of the matrix. Yeah, so this is all about the condition number and why those are important. Thanks for watching.